So we figured we'd add to the worst unboxing video ever with the Phoenix. And I want to talk a little bit about uh, the use of that tool on this recent trip. Uh, we um, took a thousand mile drive from Pittsburgh to Florida to visit my in-laws uh, who are down here vacationing. And it was my wife and I, my daughter, and the 2019 expedition uh, that we purchased earlier this summer. Uh, we had uh, some major issues about 250 miles in, the turbo stopped working, uh, no power, surging condition, wrench light on, check engine light on, and I brought the Phoenix with me. Um, I brought it because it's a smaller case, smaller tool, perfect for what I would need it for in case of an emergency, and we had an emergency. Um, so I'll show you some things that I did to troubleshoot this problem using the Phoenix. So my wife was driving when it started and uh, there was no check engine light initially, just a wrench light came on and it said something like early collision avoidance system disabled and then a wrench light came on and it was very low power. Uh, we did not notice at the time that the turbo boost was not there. It wasn't until I jumped in the driver's seat and uh, we shut the car off, restarted, hopes that it would kind of clear itself. Sometimes that happens. And I noticed that we had no turbo boost. Then the check engine light came on. Unfortunately, I had the Phoenix. So let me show you the codes that were on it. <clears throat> Sorry, I just had mac and cheese. If I go to diagnostic history, uh, these were the codes that we had. When I pulled over to that rest stop, I saw these turbo boost sensor A circuit faults, uh, internal control module torque performance. I, I didn't look that one up. Uh, I believe that that's just an effect, not a cause. But yeah, these are basically all the P0236 faults, which is turbo charger, supercharger, boost sensor A circuit range performance, uh, circuit low voltage codes. I um, saw that and, you know, of course my first thing uh, after that is to locate this sensor. And I wanna show you how I did that. There was a little bit of discrepancies in the name but I thought that this would be a good addition to the uh, unboxing video to show you how I how I found the data PID for that. Just gonna go to my engine computer. Yeah, so imagine you're 250 miles in to a thousand mile trip and, and you get something like this going on where you can hardly drive the vehicle. I mean, it was very low power, surging, bucking, and we got these boost sensor codes. So read data stream. And if you look close at this, it's, um, you know, Ford's pretty typical with this. They don't give you separate data lists and it's tough to navigate through and find what you're looking for. It's better when they're grouped, but I believe that's a Ford thing. And you see this is um, zero of 457 data parameters that are selected. So if I pick one, you see that changes to one. So um. I'm looking for anything boost sensor related and of course we can go alphabetical order which these are in and look for you know anything in the B's and you know I didn't really see anything but brake booster okay so um, I thought that this was really cool you go to the keyword type in boost anything with the name boost in it there's booster boost Right, boost. So I'm, I'm looking for my turbo boost sensor. I see a desired boost pressure. Okay, that's cool. Measured boost at throttle inlet pressure sensor. That's cool. Turbo boost sensor input, turbo over boost, turbo under boost. And what else I noticed, I'm just kind of picking anything related to the turbo system. Uh, actually, I'll just do press okay show you those parameters but then I can also go back and this is the part I like those data pids you can see even though I went back a screen they're still selected I still have five of 457 selected so then I'm gonna type in now turbo press ok and then anything related to the turbos in here too 
and we can pick you know the other turbo stuff being that we have a boost pressure code let's just kind of pick all of these and and press OK and notice that the ones I picked before the desired boost the measured boost at throttle inlet pressure those are still there um, if I go back to data stream again you can see that I still have 13 of 457 data parameters um, selected I, I really like that feature a lot of these um, lower cost scan tools when you hit back you're done you're starting over and, and the Phoenix is not like that so um, just pressing OK on that and, and these were the data parameters I was looking at and I had a little bit of issues with the um, uh, the measured boost at throttle in that pressure sensor that is my data parameter that I want to focus on um, I had a little bit of problems in the code as far as what the sensor indication was in identifying that is that my boost pressure sensor a circuit sensor that we're setting a code for and the answer is yes it is so those guys there and then the nice thing here is if I want to graph so desired measured I want that oh the other one too is temperature but let's just say these two if I want to graph them I can pick or combine is really what I want and I'm gonna pick those two guys in particular and that's desired and measured and the nice thing about this is I can um, expand it both in time, um, in frames, and then also in detail as far as zoom level. So I really like the combined data parameters. Uh, this is where I can record data too, and I can show you uh, a sample of that recording. Uh, this was done on the road recorded data I, I really you know long story short I unplugged the boost pressure sensor plugged it back in and it's been fine for 750 miles uh, so we're gonna be parts changers on this one but uh, this is this is the recorded session I have this is with it working properly and uh, there's your recording there's your playback button at the bottom you see the data moving and uh, we can graph that okay pretty cool stuff we can also combine that and I believe again see if I can do the same maybe not in the recorded data can I do yeah I can't like the time and voltage scales but you can see the, the playback of it. It's pretty sweet. The desired boost is orange and measured boost at throttle inlet. That's my boost pressure sensor. You see that they're mirroring each other. And then I also pulled in the charge air cooler voltage because that sensor shares a temp sensor. It's a four pin uh, sensor. It shares a temperature sensor with it. So I thought, well, when it acts up again, I'm gonna monitor the uh, uh, charge air cooler voltage uh, for a problem too and that can indicate like a ground problem or something like that because both sensors share the same ground but that's what we're looking at and uh, what I'm doing right now is I'm being a parts changer I'm in Anna Maria Island in Florida and there is a uh, Ford dealer I called yesterday and ordered the boost pressure sensor part because I am NOT gonna be left stranded you don't unplug a sensor plug it back in and expect it to work forever so I ordered a new sensor we're gonna make that happen I'm gonna take that with me and I'm hoping that I can update you guys on some faults that we can see in the data yeah. but I just really like the format of the Phoenix and I'm, I'm still learning you know the hotkeys and how to go about uh, using it more efficiently I'm gonna show you this live one more time and then I can graph these guys and really this is what I was doing when we were driving the car I can uh, look at individual ones and of course I can I can zoom on that too and you see I can go both ways time and voltage with kind of pinch and zoom type stuff and I can look at all of them too you can do four I believe when you're doing comparisons and there's all four of your data parameters that I had picked and on this one too you can do the same right pinch and zoom or we can go back and on this one is where your record is hitting record on this data and you see our recording down there at the bottom and while it's recording see this I don't know can I combine while recording 
Yes, I can. Sweet. I, I noticed when I was in this mode that I couldn't, so let me stop the recording and show you. And save the file. Good. I can put the file name. But if I go to combine first on this screen, uh, notice I don't have that option to save the recording. Uh, but what I found is, let's say I see something in here that I don't like, right? Maybe there's some glitches there. I just snap in the throttle. Uh, but I can hit the this camera icon, this little picture icon, and it takes a screenshot. And so it saves those screenshots. So that's pretty cool too. Just some features of the Phoenix. The Phoenix really bailed me out. Super happy that I had it with me. And I, I will never leave the house on a long trip without a scan tool again. And the Phoenix is gonna be my guy. Um, it's lightweight, it's small, um, and it's really, really functional scan tool. It does a lot. It's not just a code reader. I'm very happy to have it with me. And this under thousand dollar price point for what this tool does, um, it's pretty amazing. I'm really just touching on pieces of it here. Uh, time to go get this sensor and uh, maybe I'll have some updates for you guys on the way home. I don't want to change it yet. I want it to act up again so I can show it to you. That's my plan and um, we'll do that on the way home. Something else I forgot to say too that I like is, you know, as I'm driving this, you know, we have this hand thing in the back. This, this is pretty convenient, right, for the tool. Uh, but when I'm when I was driving, I found it was awkward to really use it that way. And and then check this out. Hook your thumb on the back of it. Grab the steering wheel, which makes the tool right here in front of you while you're driving. And I thought, man, that's pretty sweet. I really like that. So. Um, at first I was kind of complaining in my head about that because it was in my way and then I realized man that's nice to hook your thumb and then grab the wheel and that's me looking at these graphs you know on the test drive was or test drive on the drive waiting for it to act up again um, really really convenient well not bad $42 42.21 for that sensor I'll roll the dice on that all day long being a thousand miles away from home so props to this dealership. This is Auto Nation Ford Bradenton. One day, took me one day, called, ordered it, next day had it. I want palm trees in my place of work. <laughs> 419 is actually a decent price from what I've seen for regular. Unfortunately in this thing, I gotta run premium. We're gonna go straight across, get some fuel. Still cheaper than flying. Oh, uh, no screen recording for this one. I uh, just thought something was cool. You know, when I had these problems before, uh, my um, desired and measured boost were 14 and some change in my screen captures. And I'm thinking, well, that's weird. Why am I at 15 now? Duh, you're at sea level there, Paul. <laughs> we were in the mountains whenever we had that uh, those readings before we were in West Virginia. So uh, pretty cool that we're just reading atmospheric pressure with this sensor, by the way, the one in front of the throttle body, this boost pressure temp sensor, um, you know, with the throttle plate closed, no boost. We're, we're really just reading atmospheric pressure. So I thought that that was pretty cool. Before I forget, I want to say a special thank you to my friend Brian Pollock who uh, was able to help me whenever I had this code set. Because when that code set, it said boost pressure sensor A circuit, and I'm looking for boost pressure sensor, and I don't see one listed on the data stream. I wasn't sure exactly uh, the name of the sensor data PID, and, and through a little bit of uh, research, we, together with him on the phone, he helped me identify the sensor, its location, using wire colors and that yes in fact it contained an air charge temperature sensor inside of it and that helped me identify that using scan data so special thanks to brian pollock for helping me out um, it was a little bit of a a panic there for for a minute because you know i definitely had a sensor malfunction or wiring problem computer problem you know typical of a sensor code and uh 
it was nice to be able to do the old, uh, I think I mentioned this already, the, the old Nintendo cartridge, unplug it, plug it back in and make it work <laughs> test. It's funny, I often uh, make fun of people for um, unplugging sensors without testing them. I'll, I'll say things like never unplug a sensor without first testing it. And I shouldn't use the terms never and always because there's times where you definitely want to unplug a sensor and plug it back in. And, and that would be in a situation like I, I was dealing with, which was I couldn't really drive the car. It, it kept surging and bucking and low power and no turbo operation. And transmission was banging hard and you know it was acting weird for a boost pressure sensor fault i would think you know just disable the turbos you know open the wastegates up all the way which i believe i have data that's exactly what was happening and um unless these are variable vein turbos i'm not really sure uh, i thought i remembered seeing some wastegate data where the wastegates were open 100 percent but um you know a simple <laughs> unplug it plug it back in it's been good for you know 800 and 800 some miles, it hasn't done it since I unplugged it, plugged it back in. So you talk about a useful time to, um, number one, do that test, you know, where I say never unplug a component before testing it. No, in this case, you absolutely want to. Um, I wasn't worried about troubleshooting. You know, it's one of three things, sensor, wire, and computer, and you know, unplugging it, plug it back in was key. Uh, the other one too, guys, is I am absolutely a parts changer. Don't be a parts changer is my, my whole entire business motto. In this case, 1,000 miles away from home, uh, $42 sensor. I got a sensor code. I'm gonna start there, I'm gonna change it. And I, I know it's, it's gonna fix it, because like I said, I touched it and I fixed it, so. A lot of times guys will get that confused with a wiring problem and what they're not realizing is the male pins inside of the sensor you are disturbing those too when you unplug a connector plug it back in and probably nine times out of ten maybe 9.5 times out of ten when you have what seems like a connector problem it's not it's the component itself and it's the male pins where they attach to the board inside the sensor that are having an issue. If there is a board, in this case, it's a pressure sensor and temp sensor, there's definitely a little miniature circuit board in there. Um, uh, interesting to see if you guys have, have run into this on the Fords, the boost pressure slash air charge temperature sensor malfunctions. You know, I got 32,000 miles, this is under warranty. Don't care about the warranty, didn't wanna go through that channel. I could have, but I just decided to spend the $42 and just have the sensor in hopes of a good video too. Uh, maybe we can see this thing fail and we're still gonna be parts changers. I'm not gonna do any pinpoint tests, but I'll use a scan tool and wiggle it and see if we can make it do it. Then we'll change it and call it a day. The Phoenix to the rescue. All right, well, it only took a thousand miles to happen again, but this is the message I get first. I got a wrench light and a C, um, C manual post or pre-collision assist not available. So my cruise control does not work. Adaptive cruise does not work. And let's see what, if I got turbo boost here. I don't think that I do. I mean, it literally took, yeah, I got no boost. So there's wide open throttle. Oh no, yeah. Got a little bit of boost there and major surge when I get into it. Definitely not gonna pick that up with the phone. If I um, shut the key off, turn the key back on, the check engine light's gonna be on. Can't believe how long that took to come back. Literally, um, it's been a week. We've been driving the whole time we were down there and you know, the whole trip from West Virginia to Florida, never did it again. And then we went from Florida and now we're in South Carolina. So from West Virginia to Florida, then Florida to South Carolina, and it, now it finally um, acted up again. And I have the part, I wanna get the scan tool on this and see if I can show you guys what it's doing. All right, 
right, scan tool's connected, and I'm actually surprised to see the code that's here. I'm sorry for the glare. I'll start a screen recorder here in a minute. Um, I remember seeing those codes, the internal control module torque calculation performance, and um, I didn't see, yeah, I don't see the uh, boost pressure sensor code just yet. Uh, we're looking at desired and actual boost on the screen. The blue trace is the temperature. As temperature increases, voltage is gonna decrease. I pulled that in just to see if we get a glitch on the temp sensor signal too. Um, I didn't have a code for that, so I don't think we're gonna see that, but. Just work on merging. Look, 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 look. Oh, you see the hash in that? That's the sensor failing. Um, sensor just showed me some hash that I was looking for, and I was just thinking about this. Um, that, you know, when you have a code like this, a boost performance, range performance, it absolutely can be a mechanical issue, a, a turbo issue, a wastegate issue, a, an air leak in the system, those types of things. But none of that, I just wanna be clear on this, none of that would fix itself by me unplugging and plugging in the boost pressure sensor. Um, and I just saw some hash for the first time in the signal. And I, I felt a little, a little bit of a surge right before I saw it. Hey May, say hi. <laughs> hey, just real quick on battery life on this thing. Um, I just did maybe two hours of record time and I still have half battery life. So that's pretty sweet. That was scan tool running the recorder for the scan data as well as a screen recorder going for the first hour and then in the second hour it was just scan data uh, recorder going and half battery life still pretty sweet all right caleb you got to work your magic here on this um we uh just came up into the mountains of virginia it's currently 19 degrees uh, when we left florida it was uh, about 75 some extreme winds, some trucks were blown over. Um, that's really kind of irrelevant for this video. Um, I just took a screen capture of my uh, air charge temperature voltage. <clears throat> you pull this. <clears throat> Sorry, Caleb, just had a hoagie. Um, if, looking at this image that I took, um, you can see where I'm climbing the mountains. And you see how much colder the uh, air charge temperature is. Uh, I bring that up because I don't think it's going to do it again. I just believe that air temperature is a big factor with this sensor, the temperature of the sensor itself. And um, I just can't, uh, I, I don't see this, me being able to recreate this, but yeah. this is this is the, um, what's the bane of our existence? Is. is that the right phrase? Yes. As technicians, when we're trying to duplicate a customer's complaint, and once again, what do you do with a case like this, where you have, you know, these boost pressure sensor faults? You know, you're kind of rolling the dice a little bit. Again, for us, me unplugging it, plugging it in, at, when we had a hard fault on the way down, um, to me, proves sensor, but you don't have that option as a customer's car. I mean, you're gonna change a part. Change it apart based on a code, roll the dice, just make sure you communicate that with your customer <coughs> and go from there. Um, that's pretty much how this one's gonna end, I think. Uh, that one capture, I'll, I'll, I'll pull that up again. You can see the erratic behavior of the uh, boost pressure, which is what I expected to see. If this was some type of a turbo issue, um, or a air leak issue uh, or a wastegate issue, then we would have a discrepancy between the desired and the actual, um, not in an erratic behavior like we are seeing. This is what I would expect to see with this image uh, with a sensor that's failing. And uh, I was hoping to catch it. You know, we still have, uh, you know, four and a half, five hours to go, and it's possible I will, but it's really cold right now. And I just don't think we will. So I hope you guys learned something from this one. And, and the um, final thoughts on the on the um, 
on the Phoenix is absolutely a thumbs up for this tool. To have something, nice, it's my wife's thumb. To have something that has this type of capability, uh, professional grade capability for under a $1,000, um, being able to graph data, record data, bi-directional controls, uh, being able to interrogate all the modules on this system, on this car. Um, yeah, I've been really looking for something like that for you guys for a really long time. And, um, you know, props to uh, Top Don for partnering with me and offering to um, donate to St. Jude's Research Hospital for um, any of the proceeds that would, you know, normally come to a creator they call them affiliate uh, links affiliate revenue and I didn't want any and, and for them to set up this charity thing to go to St. St. Jude's Research Hospital I couldn't be happier and it's not just about that it's about the tool to being a great tool under a thousand dollars so either the Phoenix or the Phoenix Light those two models that's really what I'm using the only difference between the light is it doesn't have all the older cables uh, for the other cars. So, well, hopefully uh, there'll be an update with a final picture of the actual failure of the sensor. But if not, uh, we'll see you guys next time. So no updates, I'm sorry. I'm home now. It is, uh, what is the date? It's late April. It's like April 20th. That was filmed more than a month ago and it has not acted up since. And I believe what causes that condition is warmer ambient temperatures and extended periods of time where the turbo boost is elevated, which is going to raise the temperature even more. So it's heat. It's more than just heat of the sensor, you know, hot temperatures when we were down in Florida because it never did it when we were down there. It's long extended times with boost on the highway for hours with higher ambient temperatures. On the way down, it was like 60 degrees in West Virginia when it happened, but on the way back, it was 19 degrees in West Virginia. Um, it never did it, hasn't done it since. And um, I still have the part sitting in my door and we'll wait for it to do it again before I change it. And um, if you looked at that graph, I was just reviewing Caleb's edits here. If you look at that graph, we do see some desired change uh, for the boost pressure when we saw the hash in the sensor. Um, so that was interesting too, but I think that's cause and effect. And that area where we saw that was where I first felt the truck acting up. So that was definitely the, the best capture that I had. And like I said, it's been, it's been a while. It's been more than a month and hasn't done it again. So yeah, no updates. And I know you guys wanted to see a little bit more of the Phoenix and that is it. And oh, uh, by the way, a lot of you had talked about that being a rebranded launch, I think like X431 or something like that. It very well may be. A lot of you uh, loved the launch 431. I think that's the number you said. And you were mentioned in the Phoenix being, you know, a clone of that. And that stuff, I just don't know, guys. I'm sorry. I've used some launch scan tools in the past that were sent to me off of Amazon. They were like around a $500 range, four, four to $500 range. And they had some bi-directional controls and it was a cable uh, design, not Bluetooth. And they were just absolute garbage. You guys never saw them because I never produced them. I sent them back. I didn't even want them. Um, and then there's another one. I'm going to say this too, to close this out. There's another one that you guys have been talking about. It is the X tool and it's the D7 and the D8. And all these YouTube creators are uh, coming out and talking about this D7 and D8. I think the D7 is like $500 and the D8 is like $800. Man, there is zero comparison. The D8, the more expensive model compared to the Phoenix, completely unusable. I sent them back. Garbage, absolute garbage. And I hate to talk about um, a tool like that, you know, publicly, but when you have all these other YouTube creators that have the, the D8s and they're loving, they get excellent reviews. Man, that tool, the reason you guys haven't seen me do it because they sent me one, I sent it back. I'm not bringing you a tool to sell you tools. I, I don't even 
keep the money. Any of my affiliate revenue, you guys know that are following me, uh, it, it goes in the form of tool grants that me and AES Wave have partnered up on. And in this particular case with the Phoenix, I'm not seeing a dollar from it at all. All of the proceeds that would normally go to me are being donated to, to St. Jude's Hospital. Um, and that was um, Top Don that set that up for me. I, I requested, let's, let's do something good with it. I don't want the money. Uh, look, I'm just trying to bring you guys a scan tool for entry-level technicians, guys that want to get in this field and do diagnostic work and need a capable scan tool, but they don't have, you know, the $10,000 that I paid for a snap on Varus. You know, what can we do? They don't have even $2,500 to spend on, on maybe, uh, I, the other one I brought you guys, I think the Bosch 525X, I like that tool. I still do. That one, get, I get a thumbs up on that one too. Really like the 525X, but it's about $2,000. Um, there's some lower cost Autel units too that you guys have been mentioning to me and I just haven't had my hands on them. But, you know, I, I like the IM608, I like the Ultra, but those are higher end numbers and I'm trying to find you guys something decent that's not some garbage um, XTOOL D8 that when I select three data PIDs or even one data PID, I have to wait three seconds for an update. And when I back out of the screen, when I, Oh, you can't customize the data list. And when I when I do back out of the screen, or I think maybe the D8 you could, but when you back out of the screen like I was doing on the Phoenix, and then you go back in, it's all gone. And then you wait like 20, 30 seconds between screens. Nah, garbage, garbage. Anyway, hope you guys like the Phoenix follow-up. I'll see you next time.